Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests. And today we go to Colorado to Kat Shirley. She is a USA ice climbing team member and a biochemistry student at the University of Colorado. She has competed internationally at youth and adult worlds events since 2016. And she's the youngest American athlete ever to make a World Cup semifinal. Kat, introduce yourself a little bit and then we unpack your cool story. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Kat Shirley. I am a member of the USA Ice Climbing Team. I'm 18 years old. I'm a student at uh, the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, and I'm here just to talk a little bit about my journey with climbing and ice climbing. What got you into ice climbing? I'm from Switzerland. We went hiking, but never climbing. Where did you start? Tell us the story. I was a rock climber. I've been rock climbing since I was seven years old. My parents actually were kind of the ones who got me into it. I, as a little kid, used to love climbing everything. I would climb all the trees. I would climb up the walls of my house. We had a really narrow, like, hallways that I could, like, <laughs> it's called, like, stemming, where you can put a foot on either wall and, like, kind of scoot your way to the top, almost like a spider. And my parents eventually signed me up for a summer camp based around, like, rock climbing and other outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. And rock climbing, even back at that young age, was the first sport that ever really clicked with me. I decided that I loved it. I wanted to continue with it. Uh, and I started taking classes and eventually joined a rock climbing team. And then at the age of nine, I moved from California to Colorado, where I joined a team over in Durango, Colorado. And from there, I really like blossomed as a climber. I suddenly like was living in the mountains and I was mm -hmm. able to go up into the mountains and actually climb outside on real rock. And then from there, it just kind of accelerated when I found ice climbing my freshman year of high school. My coach is actually the coach for the USA youth ice climbing team. Mm -hmm. He was the one who like first put tools in my hands and was like, Hey, why don't you give this a try? And it didn't come to me instantly. Some people can just find a sport and know that that was what they were meant to do, but actually wasn't like that for me. I was really scared of suddenly like not being able to use my hands and not knowing when I was going to slip off. It took a long time for the tools to start like feeling like an mm -hmm. extension of my hands, but eventually. Okay. So I let's stop here and unpack like for people yeah. who've never climbed. I think we need to start at the beginning. What is the difference between ice climbing and climbing? I picture the rocks versus the ice. Maybe just if you meet somebody, if you have to explain it from the very beginning, rock climbing 101, ice climbing 101. What are the huge differences here? There are rock climbing gyms all over the nation, all over the world. It's actually going to be an Olympic sport here mm. in just a couple of weeks. Ice climbing is, or rock climbing is pretty big in popularity. It is just basically scaling either like outdoor or indoor walls, either real rock or like holds that are made out of like plastic or resin. You're using your hands on those holes of all different sizes. Some are big, like rungs of a ladder. Others are really small. They're called like crimps and you can just fit like maybe like the first like joint of your finger or like half of that onto this mm -hmm. hold. And then ice climbing is uh, very similar in like movement. It translates really well, all the muscles mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but it just feels a little bit more insecure at first because you are using like an ice axe, basically what you would think of when you think of like ice climbing would be like sort of a mountaineering axe. It's a lot like that, but it's um, specialized for to be used on these holds as well, the plastic or the resin rock climbing holds, or we have like little metal holds with like very small. And then you're using like crampons, uh, which are the spikes on your feet to mm -hmm. clip 
kick your feet into like plywood walls. It's almost like made to simulate ice just as a rock climbing gym simulates climbing on actual rocks outside. Ah, this is amazing. I could not picture myself. I'm in awe just listening to you. When you do the ice climbing, so you have those acts to go up and you said it's going to be an Olympic um, discipline. How do they judge? Like, what do they look for? Again, I'm a novice. I'm a lay person. Explain to us how, what we, what we can learn from you. Rock climbing is going to be in the Olympics now. Unfortunately, ice climbing is not quite there yet. It's a little bit less well known as a sport. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in competitions on ice climbing world cup, which we do have, uh, you have a set time limit. Usually it's between, um, five and like 12 ish minutes to climb, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really a speed competition. It's, called lead or it's the ice climbing equivalent of sport climbing with ropes mm -hmm. pacing and stuff is obviously very important just because if two people make it to the same hold then the person who wins it comes down to time it's whoever got the furthest the fastest essentially mm -hmm. but really the most important thing is just to get as high as you can and you're often using really technical holds so they can either your tools can skate off and you can fall without really knowing it that you're about to fall Or they're just like very difficult movements, like big reaches, or occasionally we'll have a dyno, which is a jump move where you have to almost take all four points off your feet and your hands and like jump up higher to another hold or like jump to another wall. That's basically how it's scored. How do you train for that? Obviously, I'm a runner. I know you need to train the legs, but we also understand as runners, we need to train the arms. How do you train on the rocks, on the ice? Or what is the cross training potentially? Of course, some of the best training you can do is just climbing and moves in the gym and working to learn all the different types of holds and all the different mm -hmm. ways you can use the different type. Of, and then we will do, we will run little drills. There's holds that we have that if you set them like upside down, you use them and they're called a floating undercling. Basically, you have to turn your tool upside down and like hook the underside. And then with your feet into the wall, you have to kind of brace yourself with your feet and then like lock off with your like shoulders and pecs to like stay in that like very strenuous upside down position. We'll do little drills like that, or we will use like laser pointers to point out moves for each other. I have a team that I do this with. We all are kind of helping each other. We're like making up our own routes. And then in addition to actually like climbing in the rock or ice climbing gym, we do cross training, like lots of body weight training, mm -hmm. hangboarding, which is where you just hang on small edges, or we'll do some weightlifting like bench press or squats, or just other ways of strengthening muscles, especially big muscles that you need for climbing. I'm curious about safety, right? You mentioned earlier on like falling. We don't want to hear any accidents. It's difficult. It's dangerous. How do you prepare for that? Or how do you prepare for any moment? That's actually one of the first questions I always get when people, <laughs> when I tell people that I ice climb, they're all like, oh, that isn't safe. But the reality is, especially in competition, we're not actually out in the mountains where there's potential for like falling rock or falling mm -hmm. ice, which is like the most dangerous to climbers. We're on artificial structures, which are not breaking really. And then as long as you are climbing with the rope and we wear helmets and like safety harnesses, then you really don't have potential to take very big or very bad falls. Then the only like risk really is we are using ice axes and we have sharp crampons on our feet. You do have the potential to stab yourself. I've never had like a bad stab wound. That's just honestly something that comes with the, comes with the sport. But mm -hmm. for the most part, we're able to avoid those. And if we do get a little bit stabbed, it's not serious. Tell us a little bit where you work in the gym in Boulder. You said you work with a team. What do you do on any given day? Yeah, so I work at the Ice Coop in Boulder, Colorado, which is actually the first dry tool gym, dry gym solely dedicated to artificial ice climbing in the whole nation. That's a really unique place. At first glance, it kind of just looks, it's a big garage door. But as soon as you go inside, it's really awesome, unique place that you've never seen before. It's almost like a rock climbing gym, but we have also these huge cubes that hang down from the ceiling. And we have like logs, almost like two by fours, but with holes. 
that are just stretched out all across the gym. And we have these hanging logs that we call icicles. And you will just find people in there climbing on the walls, but also climbing on all of these features. And the boxes will swing back and forth. You can swing to one from one to another. That's where I work. I'm basically just kind of the front desk staff almost. Uh, it's a very small place, so we only ever have one employee at a time. But my roles are usually just checking people in, getting them set up with any rental gear that they need, giving them like a brief orientation to the gym, some safety things, and then also just helping them learn how to use their tools and learn how to use the holds that we have. And then I also coach a weekly training group on Wednesday Mm. evenings. My teammates at the Ice Scoop, we have our own team there. And a lot of the people on that team are also members of the U.S. team. We have a weekly group who just like meets during the off season. And I will come up with a little workout for us. uh, And then we'll just do that all as a group. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm hoping to start teaching like either women's or beginners clinics, just to get more people involved in the sport and to show that like, this is kind of a sport for any- anyone, like anybody can come check mm-hmm. it out and kind of just to reduce like some of those boundaries or hesitations mm-hmm. that people have about it, whether if it's like too scary or if all the people that they see doing it are just like kind of intimidating, then just to <laughs> kind of break down those walls and show that anybody can do the sport and like everybody in the community is really amazing and like willing to support you uh, regardless of what level you're starting <laughs> So I could come. Anybody? Absolutely. You said anybody could come. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm a, I did the Ironman. I've done 26 marathon races. Anybody who's a little athletic, or you don't have to be athletic. A little bit athletic, or like a background in like something like rock climbing will definitely help. Mm-hmm. But I've honestly seen people who don't really do any sports at all and give it a try and have a lot of fun. Oh, uh, you might just be a little sore the next day. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Come check us out. We have like uh, late nights too, and just all sorts of kind of events. We have competitions there. Okay. I know Boulder, Colorado is the mecca of the triathlete. Certainly, I would like to see it once. We'll see. My podcast is about bridging basically the sport and the business. And now you're in college and your major is biochemistry. Can you see any parallels from the climbing into how you get through school or how you learn? Hmm, That's an interesting question. I mean, I definitely think that for me, I need to have both of those aspects of my life and like many others as well, because if I focus too exclusively on just climbing or just schoolwork or just any various things and don't have a balance in my life, that's just not really very healthy for me. It'll either lead to me getting very stressed out or overtraining and getting injured. So I guess basically, well, ice climbing has helped me really gain confidence and gain like a really awesome support system of friends and teammates and people who I really trust to be there for me, regardless of what's going on in my life. I wouldn't be able to be as successful um, with school in my major without climbing and vice versa. But I guess just like more confidence in general as like a person, which has helped me be more successful in academics. So are you competitive? In ice climbing? In life. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I would say I'm a fairly competitive person. But for me, it's always, I don't know, I used to be very, very competitive and rock climbing and ice climbing to the point where I couldn't sleep before competitions. I would get super nervous and I just didn't really know how to deal with the stress of competition and the letdown if I wasn't Mm -hmm. doing well. As I've gotten older and more experienced, I'm still competitive in that I want to do the best that I possibly can. And I want to make like my coach and my teammates and my friends and everybody proud of me, not to the point where I'm like, sacrificing what I used to. I would say I'm competitive in a healthy sense, competitive in the sense that like, I'll go out there, I'll do the very best I can, but then I'll turn around and I'll cheer on all my teammates with the same enthusiasm. Mm, that's cool. And I have a few popcorn questions. What is your favorite food? Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> 
And what do you eat before a competition? Usually I try to just get a lot of protein. It's not really an endurance sport. I don't know, running or biking where you would really want to like load up on something so you can go for a long time. Usually our competitions are flying halfway across the world to climb for five to 12 minutes. So really just a lot of protein. My favorites are I'll make eggs or yeah, but I don't really follow a diet or anything like that. Okay. I kind of just work out a lot and eat mostly good stuff, a little bit bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned traveling halfway around the world. What was the best, the highlight of your career so far? March of 2020, actually just a few weeks before like the COVID-19, mm -hmm. I was in Russia competing in the Youth World Championships there. I would say that's definitely like the furthest out I've ever been. And that's a country that I never like could have imagined that I would get to visit. Mm -hmm. And that's like an um, incredible opportunity that mm -hmm. ice climbing has given me. That's I would say definitely that trip. What are the next trips for you? We're actually going to get our World Cup schedule here in probably August. And then I will reapply or like try out for the U.S. team again. Fingers crossed that I make it. But rumor has it, there are going to actually be a few competitions in North America, either in the U.S. or Canada, which would be really awesome because competitions that are closer like that are ones that I have a greater chance of being able to make work with school and everything. Yeah. And then we do also have a bunch of awesome local competitions. The Ice Coop, where I work, we put on three competitions this past season, even with COVID, obviously just for our own athletes. But those are really great training tools and they're always really fun and a great opportunity to connect with more people in the sport. And then we also have an awesome competition in Ure each year. It's their Ure Ice Festival, and that usually will draw thousands of spectators and competitors from all over the world. So I'm very excited for that. Mm. What do you say? Like, break a leg? No? What do you say in your sport? Send it. Send it. So send sending it. a route is like getting to the top. Before somebody climbs, you can just say, send it or crush it <laughs> or rock on. <laughs> okay, rock on. Thank you so much, Kat. This was so inspiring. Good luck with everything. And we want to see you in the Olympic Games one of these days. Thank you. Thank you. What an inspirational talk. What will you take away from this? Let's go and rock it. Send it. Rock it. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday. Don't miss out. There's something for everybody. From climbing to running to entrepreneurship to business something that speaks to you follow us on your preferred platform the podcast is also available on youtube don't miss out see you next time thank you very much